everybody. I am excited that today we are going to get to go over field service management, or you may hear us call it FSM, uh, and how that can integrate with QuickBooks Enterprise. Um, I have Renee Perry on the on the webinar with us today. She's going to share her knowledge with us. She's one of our top FSM consultants here, um, so I'm excited for you to get to know her and uh, for some things to kind of look for as we go through this. Um, before we do get started on today's topic, I do want to remind everybody, uh, we do have a YouTube channel. So if you have missed any of our webinars, you can always find them on our channel at youtube.com backslash four lane. Um, we also you know, encourage you to subscribe to our channel. That way uh, you'll be able to get those notifications with anything new is added. Keep up to up to speed on everything we add. Um, I want to let everybody also know about our four lane QuickBooks support or on demand support. It's twenty five dollars per QuickBooks user per month, up to five. Um, the price then will drop to twenty if you have six or more users. Um, and the way it works, whenever you need help with some of the issues listed on this slide, such as product registration which is a key thing right now as we go into the new 24 version. Uh, QuickBooks error codes, maybe a rebuild failed. All it takes is a simple email to our help desk. Um, just give us a little description on what's going on and we'll get back to you with, within the hour um, on whatever the issue is. So if you are interested, just reach out, let us know. We can help you. All right, so one of our main concentrations here at Four Lane is helping clients to focus on using their data to help them make better business decisions. So as you can see in that beaker, that's our core, right? That's what we want to make sure we're doing. So one way we do that is just understanding, right? How we can do many of these things here so we can help with a new conversion. We can help with KPI advisories. And as we're gonna discuss today, we can also help with integrations, right? We wanna make sure that we get that um, Set up right, make sure that we know the flow both directions so that we can make sure that the data is accurate. And on that note, let me introduce you to Ms. Renee um, and she is gonna take us over to um, her screen. She's gonna show us uh, field service and QuickBooks and how they kind of relate to each other. Hey everybody. Hey Renee. Renee. And over here and share my screen. Awesome. And I think I'm almost at the right screen. Uh, are we seeing field service management, Lori? We are. Yes. Beautiful. Okay. All right. So hi, everybody. I'm Renee, <laughs> a senior consultant here at Four Lane. And what you're looking at on my screen is the field service management uh, main app, which is a web-based app. So. We can connect this to QuickBooks Desktop or to QBO. We see most of our clients connecting it to um, QB Enterprise. And this app's been around for a long time. It's very stable. Um, and we find that our clients in a number of different industries uh, benefit from field service management, such as HVAC companies, plumbing companies, electrical companies, pool services. So anybody who needs to manage they're mobile technicians, scheduling and work orders um, might be a good fit for this particular app. And today we're just gonna kind of touch on high level. There's so much I could go on and on about this for a couple of hours, but I don't have time. So we'll touch on what field service management can do to kind of help your clients. Um, the data you'll need to look at in, a, in your clients QuickBooks file because there is some cleanup that might need to be done before connecting this app. And then um, what the exchange of data is going to be between QuickBooks and field service management. So <clears throat> field service management also has a mobile app. So it works on Android or iPhone. So that the majority of what we're gonna see in here on a work order is going to be seen by your technicians. Um, all the scheduling can be done over here. They can also create their own work order. So let me show you really quickly. We'll go into a work order. And it's you know very much like the things you've seen before. So 
there's our client. Now, the first part of connection to QuickBooks is that your client base in QuickBooks is going to sync into field service management. Uh, so those will be available for your technicians to choose from. But also, if we can add new customers on the fly over here in field service management, and those are going to sync back to QuickBooks. So your customer base is a two-way sync. Um, and also, let's see here. Oh, multiple work sites are supported over here. So if you look over here to the right, I've, I've blue countertops has been chosen here. So let's go to like a new work order and I can kind of show you that. That if I choose in here a customer, and I'm gonna choose this one down here. Up here it's in orange, it's asking me to select a site. So multiple sites are supported in this application. And so if your customer has multiple locations, whether they're rental properties or uh, commercial properties, we can choose between them. And this will also sync to QuickBooks as ship tos or jobs. Kind of depends on how you set it up. We're happy to help with that. At any rate, that is supported. Um, the other thing that I wanted to point out was that it also supports multiple inventory sites. And that's a question we get a lot. So if I'm creating a work order and I drive a particular truck and that truck has inventory on it, when I complete my work order and the invoicing is ready to move to QuickBooks, it's going to have a place where it can ask me which, job, which uh, inventory site to deplete over in QuickBooks. And so then the next time we go to run the sync, it'll remember that Last time Renee was on truck one, two, three, but it will stop and ask me if I want to still use truck one, two, three, or maybe my truck's in the shop today and we need to put my invoices to truck four, four, four. And that's completely doable. There are an awful lot of settings in here to go through. I'm not gonna, don't have time to go through them right now, but there's a lot of customization to work with your clients on in this particular application. And of course, we can help with that as well. I'm gonna flip well, over here to QuickBooks. One, oh, go ahead. No, and on that one, right, that's probably mm -hmm. one of the biggest areas that we see where clients are like, oh, it's all messed up. Exactly. Right? It's the exactly. settings part. So that's why it's so crucial for that beginning. Sorry for interrupting you, but I just, it reminded me of that. Nope, you're exactly mm -hmm. right. It is confusing too, it's, it's, it's an awful lot. Um, and part of it's just the nomenclature and figuring out how all of that works. So over here in QuickBooks, like I had said before, one of the big things you're gonna wanna do, if you have a client who's already been in QuickBooks for a while and they've decided they wanna connect to field service management, is to take a little look through their QuickBooks file and look for errors that are gonna cause problems when we do our first sync. So the things we typically wanna look for and I set up a customer here that's just completely wrong. Um, so you can see what that would look like. But the first thing we're gonna look for is in the phone number fields. And there's a much better way to pull this. I can pull a report and see all the fields or do an add edit multiple and look at them that way. But what we wanna look for is that the, all the phone number fields that are in use have nothing but a properly for, formatted phone number and nothing else. So this part that's Bob sell would cause this to fail when we try to sync it to quick to field service management. The other thing that will fail would be email address fields with more than one email in it. Even if they're properly formatted with a semicolon, uh, field service management is not going to care for that. And so we want to make sure that our client cleans that up uh, prior to. The third thing we would want to look at is, and we've all run into this, right, where they've smushed all this information up here in the city, 
and there's nothing in the postal code or there's some things up here and then they're using the postal code for some sort of note. No, this needs to have a properly formatted address with a properly formatted zip code. Field Service Management will support American zip codes and Canadian zip codes. It will not accept any other country's zip code. I think the way we've worked around that with our clients is to just put our, you know, your company, their company's zip code here, and then the rest of the information up here in the address bar. In my head, most of the time, if we're using a field service management app, though, we're probably not sending people uh, to Japan to go work on something. <laughs> <laughs> so that's probably not an issue. The last thing we want to look at as far as the customers are concerned in the QuickBooks file is um, it's going to use the bill to as the bill to in field service management. And then it's going to use the ship to as sort of a site address. So there needs to be something in this field for every customer that we're bringing over. So the easiest way to do this, of course, um, well, depending on how many customers they have, is of course I can always just hit that copy button and if it's the same, just push that over there. If it's a lot, then we probably want to um, do a push out to Excel, make a correction and push back in from Excel into QuickBooks on that. Well, and that's so, something that we can definitely help them with too, right? Because we oh, definitely, yeah. we know what to look for and what won't work. Mm -hmm. And exactly. And the other thing that we want to have our client do ahead of time is clean it up. You know, I'm working with one right now and they have 25,000 plus customers in their old QuickBooks file. And I was like, do you really have 25,000? customers you're currently working with and they're like no we've just never cleaned them up right so you need to go in and inactivate your customers in quickbooks that you're not going to use prior to trying to sync um because it's not going to it'll do it but it's not going to be happy about it and then you've got a bunch of cleanup in two different places so that's on that side the other thing that's going to push over from quickbooks is your items list. So we have here our items list. This is another area to clean up if we don't have it correct or there's just some old stuff in here, this is a good time to go in and get rid of the inactives. Um, and then these are going to push over items with field service management or a one-way sync from QuickBooks. We do not put new items into field service management to have them sync the other direction. Um, not 100% why that would be, but it, it doesn't like it. It fails every single time. So that's how that works. So what's going to happen next is that, let me minimize this and pull this back up. Hopefully, there we go. Uh, what's going to happen, ne happen next is we're going to create a work order in the, you know, in here. My tech in the field is going to see that from their mobile app and go work the job. When they're finished working the job, they're going to put all manner of notes into the work order. <clears throat> and that's down here. So this is what they were sent originally. And this is. This is the other big place where we help our clients is creating this tree, this category tree, such that if I click on new service, it creates a new list of subservices for me to choose from. And then there's custom fields all throughout this program that we can set up. So that's the first thing we'd work on. So from here, <clears throat> that's our problem. This is what they're going to see in the field, although much cleaner. And then they're going to come in. Oh, come on now, Renee Perry. Let's see if we on that. Then they're going to come into this and let's get back over here. Sorry, it's hard to flip back and forth for me because I'm not accustomed to going backwards, only forwards. 
um, they're going to fill in their work done. So when they mark this work order as done, they're going to be forced to put something in the work done description, and this will also come into QuickBooks. Okay, let's get rid of that. And cancel that. <clears throat> now, they're also going to have an invoice section down here, and this is where they're going to put the items that they used. So, again, I put add and then I can drill it down. So, inventory parts, non inventory parts, so on and so forth. And whatever I choose to use is the, if it's an inventory part, is what's going to get depleted in QuickBooks when this goes over. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. It does. Okay. Now, most people, most of our clients don't invoice from the field. They allow this to come over from QuickBooks. And then we invoice from QuickBooks because, of course, we want to put our eyes on what our technicians have put in there and make sure the pricing is correct and all the things. So once the technician's done putting their things on this invoice, they're going to mark it as prepared. And that's going to put it into a queue over here to invoices and I can come to my prepared invoices which there's a lot and I'm clearly slipping on my job here um, and allows somebody in-house to take a look at the ones that were done for the day and make sure everything looks good once it looks good pricing looks right we're sure everything's on there then we're going to go ahead and improve it and there's a faster way where this could be done um, quicker with some ticks, but I just wanted to show you that somebody could come and look at it. Once this is marked as approved, let me move over to this list here. These are my approved ones. And when I run the sync from QuickBooks, which I'm not going to do right now because, again, that one takes a long, long time, um, this invoice is going to post into QuickBooks as an invoice. Again, I can change it in, in QuickBooks and then send it out to the client once it looks the way I want to. Any inventory used on these invoices is going to deplete inventory in my inventory sites. In QuickBooks, yeah. In QuickBooks, that's right. So mine, when they come over, they tend to deplete inventory in truck one, two, three, because that's how I set it up. But again, you can change on the fly um, as you run the sync. You can now, also change it like after it gets into QuickBooks too, right? If they made a oh, change yeah. and forgot. Yeah. yeah, and that's one of the things I like about it is it is only flowing over the invoicing. It's not flowing over work orders in progress or estimates or anything like that. It's only the completed invoices that are posting to QuickBooks. And so once they're in QuickBooks, you can make any necessary changes and make sure everything's hitting the right, the right place and the right items. Yeah, very good. Um, there are two modules that are add-on components to field service management. One of them is, let me get this lowered again. One of them is the time card module. So timekeeping, right? So every time my technician changes the status on a work order. So I've acknowledged the work order, nothing happens. I say that I set it to en route, meaning I'm on my way to the job. Time starts ticking. I punch that I'm work starting work on the job. Again, there's a time stamp for that. And then I punch that the job is completed. There's my final time stamp. All of that will begin to come over here into the time cards. And then again, we can approve the time cards inside field service management. And when we run our sync, those flow into QuickBooks, into the weekly timesheet. So they'll flow over into here. So that again, uh, if I were using this per for payroll, I can make my corrections here. If I'm using this for job cost tracking, um, I can also make my corrections over here and and go from there. 
So any questions on that piece? Mm -mm. I love the timesheet piece. I do too. Um, one more module that's available, and I don't have a button to show you, but um, let's go here so I can kind of make it visually effective. <clears throat> Is the preventative maintenance agreement module. So you can see right here, no preventative maintenance agreement for this site. So preventative maintenance agreement module lets you input a service contract essentially for a given site and a given piece of equipment because that's another thing we can track in here so for an example if i'm an hvac um, service company and i'm going to a house that has two condensers outside i can have two condenser pieces of equipment on a particular job site, you know, condenser one, condenser two. And then I can put a service agreement on each of those and then have this system automatically create my work orders going forward for every, uh, how do you say, every slot left on that contract. Now it puts them in needs to be scheduled. So there's an easy place for our um, manager to go find them and then get them scheduled. But uh, it does go ahead and create them for me so I know what's upcoming and what I need to get scheduled with the customer. Yeah, and the proactive maintenance are great for those people that do like monthly service check-ins, mm -hmm. right? Because that's something that's, um, it's hard to, I mean, you can do those in QuickBooks, but this way it's done here and the people that have access to this screen don't necessarily have to have access to QuickBooks. So that's another yeah, win. Exactly right, yeah. Um, and so here's a, an example at this um, company, at this particular job site, I'm choosing the piece of equipment that's been assigned to this job site, C1000 number one. And now I have my drop down of different services I would do on that particular piece of equipment. So I need to do a 16,000 hour check and I type some piece in there. Um, but what's nice about that too is not only can I have it auto create those, those um, appointments for me, I can also now see all of the work orders that we've done on that particular piece of equipment. And so can my techs in the field, which can be really helpful if I'm going mm -hmm. out and I haven't been out to that client before. Um, so that can be very uh, valuable. Very much. Mm -hmm. Do we have any, any questions at all on that? We did not, and I do not. Okay. Um, I do, I, one of the things I think, um, you know, just the number of questions on the settings that we get, and then mm -hmm. the number of people that we get that come to us going, it's it's not working, right? The sink messed up. <laughs> right. So some of those things, especially with the customers, I think that's the one that I see the most. What about you? It's, uh, absolutely the same. And that client I talked about with the 25,000 customers mm -hmm. that had not been cleaned up is exactly one of those. He had tried to set it up himself before uh, mm -hmm. a couple of years ago, and it just went badly so they reached out to us and we've been helping them through the settings and what they mean um, and what they affect which is uh, now we're getting a much smoother transition this time for them right and i i mean that's with everything right if what we if we understand it it's easier to to know how it flows so definitely mm -hmm. a big um a big area of so what about like um when they haven't connected it, they're just getting started. What are some pointers that you would give them for that? When they haven't connected to QuickBooks yet? Yeah, it's like they're, maybe it's a new company and they want to use something to help them. What would be some key things to know this is a good um, option for them? Oh, right, yeah. Um, well, it, one of the things about this is that it is uh, stable, it's been around a while, it's, self-explanatory to use uh, not necessarily to set up but to use pretty self-explanatory 
So the training is, is very simple, which we can also help with the training on that. Um, <clears throat> it's also a nice gateway into the field service management arena, right? So if you've never used one before, you're a new company, you don't usually have a ton of money to spend, this one's economical. It's a nice place to get your feet wet and see what you may and may not want out of your field service um, system. Mm -hmm. And you, we have clients that have been on this one forever, years and years and years, and it works just fine and, and they have no complaint with it. And then we have others that we discover, you know, they need something a bit more complex and we need to move them up to something more expensive <laughs> and more complicated. Right. And we certainly wouldn't want to start a new company out in those big, complicated uh, right. field service apps. So this is a great place to start. Yeah. And I like uh, the one fact of the things, that the, oh, I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. go ahead. Nope, you go. No, I was going to say I like that when you're on the different screens, you get these. Mm -hmm. How do I do this? Are you know, they're right there. I, I think a lot of people miss them because sometimes you have to scroll down. But depending on what screen you're on, those change and, you know, your help is right there. Right. Yeah, and I, and I like that. Go ahead. Sorry. No, I like that too, because it does make it easy, especially if you're like, I know I should be able to get there quickly, but I can't remember where. And right. it just kind of takes some of that guesswork out. Exactly. And um, like so many of them today, of course, this one's web-based. So, you know, if I'm, uh taking a little time off for whatever reason i need to be at home because the kids are sick i can still you know manage this from away without having to log into anything mm -hmm. you know i have to log into a server this is totally web-based so really really mobile um and the other thing i forgot to say too is about the reports so this comes with a lot of reports right out of the box and they can be a bit daunting. So of course we um, offer help <laughs> with these reports, but the layers of things you could report on are just endless. Uh, you can just totally build things from scratch and pretty much pull out all the data you want. Now, it's not financial data. Your financial data still lives in QuickBooks, but if you wanna track things like how often are we late or on time, you can do things like that. Awesome. So the reporting is pretty robust. Yeah, which is the other thing people are like, I don't know where I'm at. I don't know how to tell. So mm -hmm. I like the customization part of that. Yeah. All right, well, we don't have any questions. So if you do happen to have any that you did not ask while we were doing the webinar, please reach out. Um, to four lane, we will be happy to um, assist with those questions. Um, and Renee, I just I thank you for being on the webinar today, sharing the knowledge and the the kind of the walkthrough today and how they kind of relate to each other. That was a, a big help. Sure, that was appreciate fun. You, appreciate you taking the time. Um, okay, everybody, we have a couple of minutes. Since there's no questions, we usually reserve some time for that. I'll go ahead and let you have a few minutes back, but I do appreciate you being with us today. Um, again, check out our YouTube channel. This one will be posted out there soon and um, look forward to um, working with you soon. Mm -hmm.